education to stand for wisdom, knowledge, and strength to serve the world. Council and the Board of Directors, I would like to welcome you to Wisconsin International University College, Ghana. We are delighted that you have chosen to become part of our university community. Wisconsin is the best place for your university studies and the best choice for a bright future full of opportunities. We trust that you are excited to begin the 2023-2024 academic year with us, and we extend our best wishes for every endeavor and look forward to celebrating your achievements. We are all aware that our region continues to face challenging times and that many of you would have had to make serious economic sacrifices to continue your education. We commend you highly for this choice, which has the potential to transform your lives and that of your families and communities. I urge you to live exemplary life while here and excel in both academic and extracurricular activities so that you may enjoy scholarship grants from the university management in order to ease your financial burden. As the president of Wisconsin International University College, Ghana, I am deeply committed to your development and success and to ensuring that you are exposed to the highest quality of educational experience. You have my sincerest commitment to providing the highest standards of program delivery and an enhanced learning environment within the constraints of our current resources. I assure you of my commitment to maintaining standards of quality assurance, actively listening to your concerns, and ensuring that faculty and staff at all levels deliver the quality service that we have agreed to provide. As a student of Wisconsin International University College, Ghana, you have a very important role to play in the life and future of this great institution. You are the fortunate beneficiary of the wisdom and contributions of those who have gone before you. You also have the responsibility of both maintaining the legacy 
and continuing to define Wisconsin International University College of today. Even more importantly, you are being entrusted in guarding and protecting Wisconsin's proud legacy and ensuring the future for those who will follow you in your footsteps. I wish you all a very positive and productive years ahead. Welcome and enjoy Wisconsin International University College and live out your dreams. I thank you. My name is Joel Aiden Aqua. I am the Registrar of Wisconsin International University College. You are warmly welcome to the Wisconsin International University College Ghana family. We have campuses in Accra. Here in Accra, we are at North Legon, quite close to the University of Ghana Botanical Gardens. And in Kumase, we are at Feyase on the Lake Busumchi Road. You will surely be enriched and transformed as a family member of this great institution. We have existed since 1998 and have grown from one program, which is the International Master of Business Administration program. And as I speak to you, this school is blessed with four graduate programs. We have 19 undergraduate or degree programs, and then we have two diploma programs. We also offer non-tertiary certificate courses at our Wisconsin Center for Professional Studies. I would encourage you as a fresher, if you have time whilst you're on campus, to enroll and take other certificate courses that would enrich you, your studies. Areas in forensics, areas in cybersecurity, and very rich areas in the area of business and nursing. In December 2023, our student numbers stood at over 6,800. You have become an integral part of our investi family. An investi whose aim is to be a leader in international education. Live a life of integrity as you stayed with us, because that is what we stand for. Our dedicated faculty and staff, 389 of them are here to support you every step of the way. Do not hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions, if you want guidance on anything, or simply want to connect in any form. Please take note, as our cherished freshers, that the university life is not just about academics. It is also about forging lifelong friendships, exploring new interests, discovering the person you want to become. You want to share your talents with us. You want to share your aspirations with us so that we can grow as an international university which is looking at diversity. And we are also a dynamic place for learning. Currently, Wisconsin International University College, a truly international one, in addition to our local students, our Ghanaian students, have other students from 19 different countries in our sub-region. Most of them are from the West and the Central Africa. We are blessed as a school, and I would encourage you that whatever talent you have, take advantage of the facilities to become a better person. We have a fully equipped library, in fact, libraries, in both our Accra and Kumasi campuses. And you'll be glad to know that one of our libraries, the one in Accra, has a garden inside the library. Enjoy our state-of-the-art nursing skills labs, and you'll find out that they really are state-of-the-art. We have very advanced law mood courts for our law students. There's a neurodiagnostic center right here on our Accra campus. There's a music studio, which helps not only our music students, 
but especially students of our communication study school to develop their skills. If you have a talent in that area, as a student, you can take advantage of the music studio. We also have an FM station within our School of Communication, and we invite volunteers to go and support us to grow our university. I would encourage you to embrace the opportunities that lie ahead. Do not pass through Wisconsin, this great university, without letting the university pass through you. Steady hard and join our over 13,000 alumni out there who are making this school very proud. Once again, welcome to the Wisconsin International University College Ghana family. My name is Joyce Latte, Senior Assistant Registrar and in charge of Academic Affairs, Wisconsin International University. We welcome you all to Wisconsin International University family. We hope that your stay with us is going to be enjoyable and memorable at the end of the period. Our focus today on our academic affairs is going to concentrate on areas of concerns, which is related to issues that always reoccur in the process of activity with academic affairs. So the focus will be on admissions-related issues, registration, lectures, timetable, examinations, results, that is your academic records, and then graduation. We'll concentrate the graduation on requirements for graduation. So we are going to start with admissions-related issues. As fresh students, we have all received our admissions letters. And we want you to take notice or pay particular attention to some of these critical areas that concerns us. The first thing you have to look at on your admission letter is your bio data. Bio data consists of your name, the spelling of your name and arrangement of your name. It's been indicated on your admission letter. We expect every student, or it's a requirement of every student to confirm these details on your letter. And if there is any ratification, we can get it done immediately. So your name, the spelling, and then the arrangement. Your date of birth is very particular to us. Your ID number, program that you are offering, the session, the campus offered, and your nationality. These are the details that we expect that you confirm for us on your admission letter. And this information will go onto your data and that of our affiliate institutions. So please confirm all these information before the commencement of lectures for your program. Our next area of concern is course registration. Every fresh student is required to register at the beginning of every semester during your stay with the university. The concerns that we have with our students are that they register at the first year, first semester. Some pay the full fees and do not register again. And we have challenges with students who fall within this category. So we want you to pay more attention to this area. You are to register every single semester at the beginning of the semester. Fresh students are required to pay 75% of their fees. 
to be eligible for registration. The registration starts with payment of your fees at the bank. We have the various banks on campus for which the finance director will detail the processes for you to make your payments. When you are done with your payments, you must submit your pay-in slip for the fresh students to the finance office for you to be issued with official receipts and a registration form. When you are done with this process, please proceed to your faculty for registration processes to be taken by the faculty. Students are requested to make sure that, to make sure to confirm their registration on their student portal. So every student will be assigned a portal that you must confirm your registration for the semester. You proceed from the finance office to ICT directorate at block B for your picture to be taken, your passport picture to be taken by the unit. Then your email address will be activated. Bear in mind that your ID number is already quoted on your admission letter. So your email address will be activated upon payment of your fees, registration, and then after you've taken your passport photograph. There will be a shadow from the academic affairs as to when and how your pictures will be taken. So when this information is sent to the university community, please pay particular attention so that you get your schedule and adhere to the schedule accordingly. Please make sure that all your correspondence with the university is addressed to the registrar. And you are supposed to take notes or indicate your email address, the university email address, your student's ID number, and your phone number. I will take this one again. Make sure in all your future correspondence with the university, you quote your name, your ID number, and email address in your correspondence because we only identify you by this information. So students are to take particular attention to these details and it makes our work easier for us. The next area we are going to look at is lectures and then timetable. We have the timetable for lectures on the university website. We entreat every student to visit our university website to confirm their schedules. Our programs are on weekends, regular, that's during the day, and then evenings. So you are to take particular attention or pay particular attention to these sections so that you know exactly which sessions we are supposed to attend lectures. The lectures is going to be a blended approach. This, is, this unique area is as a result of the COVID. So we are going to have the in-person and then online sessions. The schedule for this mode of teaching is pasted at our various notice board for students to note the schedules that has been indicated. Your lecturers will also give you the necessary information as to the Zoom link and all other necessary information that you may need if you are going to have an online section. We entreat every student to work with their class reps or class representatives in these areas so that they can communicate and coordinate the activity 
of the lectures and through their faculty offices. If students have any issues or concerns of the timetable, they should contact their various faculties and get in touch with their various faculty officers to address all issues for them. We also want to entreat our students to always visit the faculty for any other academic related issues or concerns that they have. We have our faculty officers well equipped and other administrative staff who will address all their concerns and issues for them. If for any reason you are asked to visit the registry for a follow-up, please contact the academic affairs unit. Even if you have to meet with the registrar, you must first come to academic affairs for us to ascertain your consent before we proceed to the registrar's office if the need be. So we entreat students to take note of this particular areas that we've indicated. Examinations are part and parcel of our responsibilities as students. So we should also expect that at the end of every section or every semester, examination will be conducted. And it's mandatory for all students to participate in examinations. The processes for examinations are that questions will be set by the lecturers at the end of every semester. And the processes involved the lecturers and the faculty to have an internal moderation within the faculty and that of our affiliate institutions. This processes is to ensure that questions set are fair and to the standard of every course that you'll be taking in the semester. When this internal moderation and external moderation are done by our affiliate institutions, examination will be conducted. But before then, examination timetable will be published at the university website, which will give us a shadow as and when each course will be taken. Bear in mind that our communication with students in the area of examination, table numbers, halls for exams to be taken will be communicated to students through your official email address. Bear in mind that most of our communications will be through your students' official email address. Students are required to make sure that they activate their email address and constantly visit their emails to make sure that all the necessary information are provided. Table numbers will be sent to students not less than 24 hours to the time of the examination. So students are supposed to take particular attention to this information. For students to be eligible for examination, you are expected to pay your fees in full. The schedule for deadlines for payment in full shall be detailed to you by the finance director. And you are expected to take note of this information. For you to participate in the examination, you must have participated in your lectures. And at the same time, you have participated in all interim assessments by your lecturers. This will enable you to write your exams at the end of the semester. And please pay, pay particular attention to this information. You are also required to confirm all courses that you've registered in your student's portal. We have instances where students come back 
for a new semester to the academic registry to inform us that when the results was published, they did not see their results in their portal. What that means is that you may have not confirmed your registration details in your student portal. So before we commence examinations, we entreat every student to confirm their registration in their portal in order to be eligible for examination. And the registration is where the information will be extracted for table numbers to be generated for the examinations. Bear in mind that you cannot write any university examination without your ID card. So at every point in time in the examination schedule, you are always supposed to come to the examination hall with your ID card. If for any reason you've misplaced your ID card, you must proceed to the finance office to make the necessary payments for which you'll be informed by the officers to be able to submit the receipt to academic affairs for a new ID card to be issued. Students should note that without payment of replacement of ID card, academic affairs will not issue any new card for any students. So you are to take note of this as well. Before the commencement of examination, examination rules and regulations will be published on the university website, in the student's portal, and then on our notices board. Please pay particular attention to these details, because the university frown on examination more practice, and the consequences of it has a very long way to affect your progression in the process of your program. You are not supposed to come to the exam hall with any foreign material. We want to emphasize on any digital gadgets that comes to examination hall is treated as examination more practice. We have examination disciplinary committee that handles examination more practice related issues. If you are found in this any more practice, a committee will have a shadow and you'll be informed accordingly to meet the committee and the implications will be spelled out to you when the committee submits their reports. So we entreat every student to pay particular attention to this so that you can complete your program successfully. Another area that academic affairs is more concerned is with academic records of our students. What we mean by academic records are student results and transcripts. Students are required to confirm all results that are published at the end of the semester or the beginning of the semester when results are approved and released. You have to confirm this information on your student portal. You can also confirm this on your transcripts. Every semester, students are expected to confirm that all courses that they've taken reflect with the appropriate grade on their transcripts. If for any reason you participated in examinations, you registered for a particular course, and your results is not reflecting, kindly visit your faculty. Your faculty officers or your examination officers will coordinate with the various lecturers to get the necessary results, confirm all the requirements for examination, that is your reg attendance register for the examinations, 
your scripts, and then from your lecturer's score sheets to make sure that you participated in the examination so that this issue will be fixed. We want to encourage students to address these issues from their faculty, other than coming directly to academic affairs. Academic affairs only work with the information that has been provided by the various faculties and departments. So if for any reason your results are not reflected, we may not be able to take the initial stages to address the issue for you other than your faculty. If for any reason the faculty asks that you should proceed to academic affairs for further details to be taken into consideration, then please kindly come to the registry, academic affairs issues, and all resource related issues will be addressed appropriately. Please make sure you first get to your faculty to lodge a complaint before you are directed by the officers to come to the academic affairs. If not, you start with academic affairs, we may have to ask you to go back to the faculty to initiate the process from there. Can you take note of this particular information? Because it's key to us in the process of our activity at the academic affairs. We proceed to the requirements for graduation. We have mentioned admission-related issues. We have also discussed registration issues, lectures and timetable, examinations, results, and the last one is the graduation. This process is at the tail end of your program. What that means is that you have come to the end of your program and we are to process all your data for graduation. But there is a requirement or eligibility for graduation. Students are expected that they have taken all the courses that is required and the credit hours that it entails, depending on your program of option. So you must have a total credit hours, depending on your program, 60 credits, a minimum of 60 credit hours for a two-year program, 96 credit hours for a three-year program, and a minimum of 120 credit hours for a four-year program. Students are expected or they are required to confirm that all courses that they've taken are indicated on their provisional transcript. They can also confirm from their portal. Grades has been allocated to all these courses. And if you have any receipt, you have participated in the receipt, and your results are reflecting on your transcripts. The grading system for the university is also indicated in the student handbook. When the SRC have their orientation, we will meet with the student body to take you through with our technical officers at Academic Affairs on the details of the grading scheme. But the information on grading scheme is published in our handbook for which, as a student, you are required to calculate your GPA. You are supposed to have, or for you to be eligible for graduation, you are supposed to have a minimum of 1.00 cumulative GPA. Please bear in mind, 
Your cumulative GPA is supposed to be a minimum of 1.0. So for any reason in the course of your program and you do not meet this requirement, the faculty will prompt your attention to your cumulative GPA for you to set up to be able to graduate. So students are supposed to take notice or particular pay particular attention to this area, which is critical to us as a university. We have come to the end of our discussions, but I will recap the main areas of concerns that we discussed. The first one is the admission related issues, course registration, lectures and timetable, examinations, academic records, result that entails results and your transcripts that you are supposed to pay particular attention to at the end of every semester, and then your requirement for graduation. We wish you well with our stay with us, and we know that your stay is going to be a very enjoyable and a memorable one at the end of the program. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Mrs. Comfort Asari, and um, I'm the university librarian for Wisconsin International University College. Hi, students gathered here. You are welcome to the Wisconsin International University College Library. We are optimistic that your stay here for the next three, four years will be the best because all the needed resources have been made available for your use. First of all, our vision is to be the heart of the academic and research community and contribute to intellectual um, knowledge over here. Again, before we go down to look at the resources that we have, we also need to know our mission. Our mission is to support students and staff with the needed resources, again, to create the conducive environment for learning. You can find us in block D, the ground floor, and then the first floor. And then a brief about our library system. We have the Wisconsin main library on the campus. We have a law library at the Faculty of Law. We have a departmental library for nursing. And then when you go to our Kumasi campus, we have another library there um, at Mfeyase off the Bosomche Road. Now, our opening hours. During weekdays, we open from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. On weekends, that is Saturdays, we open from 9 o'clock to 2 p.m. And then on Sundays, we open from 12.30 to 4.30. The Sunday opening hours is just for the law faculty library only. Now, our service points. As I said, we have the main library on the ground floor. We have the first floor, that is our reference library, and then the other um, departmental libraries. Then the materials that are available in the library. We have the prints. When we talk about the prints, we know there are a number of programs that are being offered at Wisconsin, and we have textbooks that cover all the areas that, um, that are being drawn here. Besides the print um, materials, we have the electronic databases as well. And um, it will interest you to know that um, Wisconsin is a member of the consortium of the academic and research libraries in Ghana, and by virtue of this membership, we have access to over 30,000 full-text journal articles. So students can either come on campus, come into the library, get on the school's website, and then make use of all the resources that are available here. Beside um, the resources that are made available by the consortium, we also have another database called Dennis Law, and this is for the law 
students only. It is also running on campus, and our law students also can sit anywhere on campus and then access these um, data and bases. Now let's look at some of the facilities that we have here. We have discussion rooms, and this is something that we pride ourselves with. We have discussion rooms. They are quite a number where students can come and then book into any of the rooms in groups and then have discussions um, for a period and when they are done they sign out and then they move out and then another group also checks in to use the facilities that are there. We also have a small computer lab right inside the lab that is on the ground floor where students who do not have access to laptops and their phones can come and then use um, the machines that are made available to access the electronic databases that are available. Again, there's one innovative thing that we have introduced here, and it is called a library garden. And this is something that I'm so passionate about it because I've not visited all the libraries in Ghana, but I can say that Wisconsin is the only library now that has an indoor garden right inside the library. And somebody may ask, why this? You know, when we study, we get stressed up. So it's a kind of stress relief for um, our students. And again, we want to give a natural environment where our users can come in, sit and study. When they are done, they go back. Again, we also have another session that we call the leisure corner. We have couches there. We have storybooks there. So when students are tired of studying, they can go sit there, read storybooks. When they are done, then they can go back and then continue with their um, studies. We also have um, um, large reading spaces for our users. Again, when you talk about collection, for all the service points, we have over 14,000. Over 14,000. And um, currently, our library is automated. All the collection can be accessed both on campus and off campus. You can access our, the textbooks that we have here. So basically, this is a brief of what um, we have at Wisconsin Library. And going forward, I think um, there's a project that we are looking at where we are going to have an institutional repository so that when students complete and then they are done with their project works, we are going to upload them so that wherever you are, you can access them and then the, that the research output of Wisconsin can be made visible out there. Now, let me touch on some of the rules and regulations of the library. We don't allow bags into the library. So before you enter into the main library, there's a security point where you leave your bag, you tag it, and then you send the other tag in there. You can keep the other half of the tag for as long as you are within the library. And anytime you want to go out, you want to check out, you present your tag, and then your bag is given um, to you. Again, we don't allow bottled water into the library. You can come in with your personal flax, because we know that when you are done drinking the water, you not leave the flax. So please, don't come in with bottled water. Come in with your personalized um, flax. No sachet water is allowed in the library. Now again, we also don't allow food. So please, if you are hungry, make sure you go to the canteen, um, get whatever you want to eat, and when you are done, you're coming. Because as you come in, we may do some kind of random checks here and there. And then also, you're not supposed to make or receive calls in the library. Before you enter into the library, please make sure your phones are on silence or on vibration. And as soon as your phone starts beeping, you run out or you walk out of the library, pick your calls, and then you come back into the library. Now, let's look at some of the, um, some of the periods that you can um, contact us. As I said, because we are open from morning to evening, we are available. So at any given point in time, you can walk into the library and then interact with us. And whatever questions you have, we are willing to assist you in that direction. Again, we also have an official email where you can send emails to us and then we'll respond to that. Let me also add this too. For apart from the nursing students, we have past questions 
in e format here. So if you need a past question in any area, send us an email, libraryenquiries at wiuc-ghana.edu.jh. So on this note, I want to say thank you so much and then welcome to our library. We hope you have a nice day. My name is uh, Dr. George K. S. Akofu. My directorate is Academic Planning and Sustainable Program Development. I wish to welcome all of you to Wisconsin International University. First of all, you are here for something, and there's a need for you to be serious and focus on whatever you are doing. Orientation is very important because anywhere you go, any organization, you need to know the corners of the organization, what they do, what they don't do, and so on and so forth. I would like to welcome all of you to Wisconsin International University. This is a very unique university where anything you need, you can be assisted because there are lecturers and staff who are here 24-7. Do not be ashamed to go to any of the lecturers for your challenges. And orientation is a very important item on Wisconsin calendar, especially in every semester. For new students, both graduate and then undergrads, it is important because you need to know what happens at this university because that is where you succeed. If you keep on going about asking for non-existent items, you may not be successful. So just focus. As first year university students, or maybe some of you, especially the master's students who have attended some universities before coming here, you need to plan. And the planning involves a lot of things based on you, not on anybody not on your parents, not on members of staff here. Well, at times, you can go to them for some solutions to your problems. But everything as a student depends on you. If you don't go for lectures, you don't, there's no way you are going to pass. Your primary aim of coming here is to get a good degree. And for that matter, you have to be serious right from the word go. The lecturers, they are always here. Academic st staff and non-academic staff, they will assist you in anything which is a challenge to you. Now, our academic sessions start with the first semester from August to December. Then the second semester, that is for lectures from February to May. And each of the uh, programs, we have 13 weeks for teaching, one week for revision, and two weeks for exams. And when you go for lectures, you be lectured for, you have one hour lecture, one hour for tutorial, and then at the most, some of the courses are two credit hours, others are three. The three credit hours, you have two hours for lectures and then one hour for tutorials. And each student at the undergraduate level, you are supposed to take a minimum workload of 18 per semester or maximum of 20 or 21. That is, you can do six courses in a semester and a maximum of 21, minimum 18 courses and then maximum 21 in the whole in the semester. If you fail in any of them, there is no need to wait. The next semester, you can always take it because at Wisconsin, all the courses are repeated every semester. So you always have the chance to take it if you have a receipt. And 
The Cape Coast system is such that you have A if you have your max between 80 and then 100. And the max consists of continuous assessment and then the examination. Now, for the examinations, we have examinations at the end of every semester. And a student is in good standing if you have at least 1.0 as, as a cumulative graded point average. But it's not encouraging enough. You don't encourage anybody to be even below two. You have to work hard and make sure you are 2.5 and above. That is second class lower at least. You can't come to university for four years and get a third class. What will you use it for? Though there are some schools which are taking a third class now for master's, but we don't encourage that at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, you just have to work hard and get the requisite qualification. Then you progress. The duration of examination for undergrad is two hours, but there are some courses which you have to do examination for three hours. But most uh, graduate programs, the examinations are three hours. And also all law courses, they are three hours. Uh, the undergrad, uh, some, especially accounting, they require three hours in examination. So for every student to be eligible to write exams, you must attend classes. And the lecturers, we have a register. They will mark the register of academic affairs. They take notice of those who have not been coming to class. And if there is anything which you need in the future and you don't know your lecturer, for example, examination room, you are supposed to write the name of your lecturer on your script because there may be three, there may be more than one lecturer teaching the course. So you need to separate the scripts. So there's a need for you to know the name of the lecturer. That is very, very important. Very, very important. And also in examination, examination my practice, Wisconsin will front on examination my practice. You carry some papers to the examination room or your phone. As for phone, it's out completely. You are not supposed to take your phone to the examination room. No foreign material, whether the phone is on or off, it is still a phone. So don't take it. If you are coming for examination, just leave your phone somewhere. Bags, you are supposed to bring the bag, but not in the examination room. You can put them outside where we have places for them. Or the SRC has got a place where you pay some amount, then your bags are kept there. But it's advisable if you are coming for examination, nobody is going to call you within the two hours. Just take the examination, that is your calculator, or pen and pencil, that's all. That is all that you need in the examination room. And before the examination, you simply have to work hard before you can pass any examination. Now, in every university or in any school, timetable is very, very important. So I want to talk about the timetable. Because the timetable begins the semester or the timetable opens the school and then closes the school. So without a timetable, there is nothing any university can. There will be total chaos. So the timetable is at the university website. Just access it and know where to go. The classrooms are there. Everything is labeled. If you have problem with the timetable, see your faculty officer. The faculty officers will be able to help you. Now, provisional timetable is normally out about three weeks to start lectures already for this semester which we are going to begin on the 24th of January the provisional timetable is out and students lecture in fact stakeholders they have to go through the provisional timetable and tell us the timetable committee through your faculty officers the challenges you have don't keep the challenges until we start lectures because the moment we change one item on the timetable the whole timetable is disoriented and there will be total confusion. 
That is why the provisional one comes out about three weeks before we start lectures. Then the permanent one will come out one week before we start lectures. So that any corrections which are supposed to be made, then we do that. We will go through lectures, we do all your assignments. The mid semester exam is very, very important. If you don't do any assignment, it means you don't know what you are here for. The assignments are very, very important. Because assignments and the IA, that is interim as continuous assessment, that is some lectures, one hour, others two hours, depending on the course you're doing. All put together takes 40%. And you are supposed to pass both. And the examination itself, the one you sit down to write, is 60%. If you refuse to do any of the assignments, or in fact all the assignments, and you have a zero, zero is a mark, and there's no way you are going to get 60 in the examination. So you will fail. And you get an IC. That IC means what? Incomplete. So you cannot get a grade in the system. And it will affect your transcript. Apart from the school timetable, as a very serious student, you as a student, you have to get your own timetable. Personal one, what you're supposed to do if you are free? Are you supposed to be in the library? Put it there. Create a timetable on your own, including Saturdays and Sundays. If you are going for entertainment, put it there. If you are going for whatever. Just put it there, then you go strictly according to that. But make sure the readings and the learning take much of your timetable down. Any other curriculum, any other extracurricular activities. Because you are here for learning. My office hours is normally from uh, 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock every day. I also lecture. So I'm here on Mondays and up to uh, Saturdays and nine o'clock up to about four o'clock. Saturdays because of examinations, then I, I'm always around. Once again, I want to welcome you to Wisconsin International University. It is very good that you have taken this university. There is always, uh, we have a uh, our past students who are always scattered all over, they're ready to assist you. The lecturers also, they're ready to assist you. So whatever you have, whatever challenges you have, you see us. Don't feel shy. So once again, you are welcome. Welcome to Wisconsin International University. This is the ICT Directorate, uh, formerly the IT Support Unit. Um, I am Dr. Mohamed Siraj, I am the head of the unit. I'm also the Data Protection Supervisor of the University. Um, we are located at the Block B, second and third floor. At the second floor, we have the big computer lab and the small lab, as well as the uh, formerly uh, the IT conference room now also used as a lab. And at the third floor of Block B, um, we have our offices, uh, my office number 410. We also have office number 411, which is the IT support general office. We also have office number 412, which is the systems admin, uh, network and internet uh, officers office. Um, at the big lab, we have two officers stationed there, uh, Mr. Jacob Asari, and Mr. Jacob Doe. At the general office, we have some support guys over there. There are a lot of them. At the internet and um, network uh, services, we have Mr. Edwin Agba, who is at the room 412. At the IT, ICT directorate, we are responsible for everything IT or ICT of the university. So when we say IT, we are talking about the information technology and the communication gadgets as well. So anything that has to do with 
the technology in terms of computing, in terms of your uh, laptops and so forth, softwares that you need in your, on your computers, we are responsible for that. Um, your PA systems, um, your microphones, the speakers in the lecture halls, the projectors, and also um, your official email, we are also responsible for that. And taking of your taking pictures for your ID card, we are also responsible for that. And if you need any help with regards to your laptop, you can see the general office and they can help and support you in that regard as well. Um, as far as the lab is concerned, we have some ground rules that are very general and we expect every student or anybody at all who uses the lab to observe them for us. One of them is to not take food into the lab. Um, also, your bags are not supposed to be taken into the lab. You are supposed to leave your bags with the security post at the second floor, I mean the big computer lab and the small lab. You are not expected to take your labs, uh, your bags there. And um, the lights and the AC, you are, you are supposed to make sure and they are turned off uh, before you leave, especially if you are the last class of the day. And you have to make sure you have alerted the security to come and take care of any other thing that needs to be done in terms of locking the lab and making sure the AC um, and the lights are turned off. Um, we are not also supposed to take anything outside the lab. Don't take our, our mouse, don't take our keyboards, don't take anything, don't carry anything out of the lab. Um, if you need any help or you have, you brought your laptop and you want to use it in the lab, <clears throat> you are supposed to let us know and let it be registered by the security uh, person at post so that when you are taking it out, we know it belongs to you. Um, other than that, uh, you are not supposed to take anything outside the lab. These are the ground rules that we need you to observe uh, at the lab and you will be fine. When it comes to your official email, your official email is the email that university communicates with you um, formally. We don't use your private email often. In fact, we prefer to use your official email, which is your ID number at the university domain. So if you search in the email uh, system, which is a regular Gmail, um, it's a Google workspace, so it's a Gmail account. So if you search on the email platform, you will see the names of your lecturers. If you type their names, you will see their email addresses as well. You can send them emails. So if you see a name at the university domain, which is wiuc-ghana.edu.gh, this is an email of a staff of the university, not a student. But if you see an ID number at wiuc-ghana.edu.gh, this is an email address for a student, okay? So the names are associated with the email as well. So when you type the names, you will see the emails pop up. And so if you have any challenge with your email setup, you can see us. Your email accounts are also used for your student information portal. So if you have any challenge with your student information portal, uh, you can also see us and we can assist along with the academic affairs. If you are a student of the university, you are supposed to know and get access to your student information portal. And that is where you are able to see your registered courses, your results, and all that. And all these informations are linked, or all these information are linked to your official email. So your official email is key and is something you are supposed to get. You are supposed to get your ID card. I mentioned that earlier. You are supposed to take your pictures and you do this at the big computer lab with uh, Mr. Jacob Asari. Uh, mostly he will take your pictures and make sure in collaboration with the academic affairs, your card is printed for you. And that is one of your documents to show that you are a student of the university and you can have access to the facilities that we have in the university. With uh, your internet uh, facilities, do we have Wi-Fi on campus? We also have a um, LAN network, which is reserved for staff. But for students, we have some hotspots around. So you will see and know where the hotspots are. We have um, some signposts to make you see where 
the signal are strong and you can assess your uh, internet facility there are some um, hotspots I can mention offered <clears throat> at the library at the um, uh, canteen area at JCR and um, other places right so you are able to get your Wi-Fi to be able to use the internet the internet is meant for academic purposes not for entertainment so you are supposed to use it for your research learning and so forth right you are not supposed to use it for torrent download heavy downloads and all that if you do that you make the internet slow for your colleagues and you are likely to be kicked out of the uh, network so you don't want to uh, find yourself in that situation so um, we we also create the account for your internet uh, your Wi-Fi access and you are able to get that at the IT support uh, uh, ICT directory with any of the support guys so be it at the big computer lab or the general offices as I indicated earlier and um, so these are some of the amazing things that we offer we also occasionally offer some ICT training so you have to look out from the <clears throat> PR and marketing team um, on telegram or whatsapp and so forth and they will be sharing some of these things with you and you can take advantage of that as well so once again uh, on this note uh, if you need us you can always reach out to us via email on call or come to our office in person and you can uh, get our services i will once again like to welcome you to wisconsin international university and i will wish you all the best in your journey and success thank you very much Welcome, dear students, to the Wisconsin International University College family. We wholeheartedly welcome you to join our fold. My name is Loretta Sylvia Tete, the Dean of Students. My role basically is to seek the welfare of all students and to ensure that all issues pertaining to students are addressed and also to ensure that there is a conducive environment created for you to pursue your academic goals. Now, what is the purpose for being here as students? Your purpose for being here basically is to ensure that you pursue your academic goals and to achieve the highest that you can. Therefore, we would encourage you to take your lessons seriously and to ensure that you contact your lecturers when the, the need arises. We also encourage you to form study groups and to be able to ensure that you understand all topics and you are able to answer all questions when demanded. Now, beyond academic work also, we will we'll encourage you to socialize. How do you then socialize? It's best to join clubs. We have various clubs on campus for you to enjoy, to be able to also socialize with others. You need to form your networks, you need to fraternize with others to be able to enjoy campus life. Coming back to addressing your issues academically, you may have issues pertaining to a particular course that you are reading. How do you then address that? You need to contact your lecturer, the lecturer who taught the course, and be able to have answers to your problems. And I know our lecturers are kind enough to be able to help you understand each topic and be ready to prepare you adequately for exams. Now beyond that, if there are issues that the lecturer is not able to handle, the lecturer may direct you to see the head of department. And I know these heads of department are also very capable to, to be able to handle all issues pertaining to students academically. Then beyond that, if there, there's a need to go a step higher, maybe the issues were not well addressed or we couldn't find answers to that, would ask that the dean of the faculty would step in to be able to help. The reason is we want you to have a sense of belonging, to be able to get your issues academically resolved. And so, I know that the heads of department, the lecturers, and the deans of the various faculties will be able to help you settle all issues 
very well. Now beyond that, I may be called in to assist to help the issues resolve. And that is where I come in as a dean of students to help them find a solution to your academic issues. And going further, beyond us also, then we may ask the management to come in. I would encourage you not to go straight to management to get your issues resolved, because I know the lecturers, heads of department, the dean of the faculty, and myself are capable of resolving your issues. If it goes beyond us, then maybe we may call in management to assist, to address your academic issues. Let's now talk about the non-academic issues. We know that we all have challenges, and the challenges may come in various ways. They could be personal issues. They could also be um, maybe career path, and, and so on and so forth. So Wisconsin has been able to create a department called the Career Guidance and Counseling Unit. We have capable staff to help you navigate through your issues. And so we would encourage you, if you have issues pertaining to academic work or your career path or any issue to deal with yourself, personal issues, you may have to contact the director of the department to help you resolve it. I also may be able to come in to help you resolve such issues. So don't shy away from contacting us to be able to help you resolve such issues that you have. It is just to ensure that your mind is settled, you are, you are well able to handle your academic issues, nothing distracting your attention. Let's talk about avenues for scholarships. The first one is the business school. The business school has four scholarships for needy but brilliant students every year. And looking at your grade points average, you should be able to score so high to be able to uh, go for an interview. And the interview determines if you would be given a scholarship or not. There is also the Chancellor's Award scheme going to very brilliant students who consistently make first class right from level 100. It is very competitive, so we would encourage all of you to work very hard to be able to assess this award. There is scholarship given to best performing students at each level. There are other scholarship avenues for students to take advantage of. We have the Students Loan Trust Fund, the Get Fund Scholarships, the GNPC Scholarship, and the UN Scholarship. And these normally will go for the local students. The foreign students are not left out. You should be able to contact the International Students Affairs Unit to help resolve your issues. The unit will be able to assist you with residence permits and other concerns of yours. We also encourage you to join various international students' associations to be able to socialize on campus. Once again, I warmly welcome you to the Wisconsin family, and I encourage you to enjoy your stay here with us. You can also reach me at the academic block, room 330, at all times for your needs to be addressed. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful stay. Hello. Welcome to Wisconsin International University College. I'm Elizabeth Abbey, the head of Career and Counseling Services Center. It's my pleasure to provide you with a brief information to who we are, what we do, and what makes our university unique. Wisconsin International University College is a dynamic and vibrant institution dedicated to academic excellence and fostering a community of learning and growth. Our commitment to providing a well-rounded education is reflected in the diverse programs we offer. As the head of the Career and Counseling Services Center, my role is to equip students with the knowledge, 
skills and critical thinking abilities necessary to thrive in their respective areas of specialization and career choices. Our dedicated faculty members are not only experts in their respective fields, but they are also passionate mentors committed to helping students succeed. We encourage a collaborative and supportive learning environment where students can explore their interests and push the boundaries of their understanding. This place is where you will find a rich tapestry of cultures, ideas, and experiences. We believe that diversity is a cornerstone of a robust education, and it's something we wholeheartedly embrace. Whether you are a faculty member, a student, or a community member, I invite you to explore all the opportunities here at Wisconsin International University College. Locate the Career and Counseling Services Center on the graduate block, room 603 and 610. Or you can contact us on 0266 77 9557 or 020 2560. You can also send us an email um, to career.counseling at wiuc-ghana.edu.gh. Join us on this journey of discovery, growth, and academic excellence. Thank you for being part of our community, and I look forward to welcoming you to Wisconsin International University College.